Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, shalom, Mosai and Christ blessed. This is Captain Gideon. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains, and to my right, Officer Bezalel. Uh, today's topic is uh, don't get comfortable in your sins. Don't get comfortable in your sins. So we're going to jump right into it. Give me the book of um, Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 26. Um, matter of fact, before that, give me uh, sin, because we have to understand what is sin. Many of us don't know what is sin, okay? First John 3 and 4. The book of 1st John chapter 3 verse 4 whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law uh-huh for sin is the transgression of the law so the Bible is very clear it tells you whosoever commits sin transgress the law that means you break the law when you sin because what sin is the transgression of the law but we live in a society where Christianity teaches that the laws of God is done away with impossible because if it's done away with then there's no sin. This is why you've seen Christians living the way they're living. So-called Christians, I said, because a true Christian is a follower of Christ. And Christ came to do what? Give me that in John 6, um, 35, is it? Hold on. Christ came to what? Do the Father's will. Okay, let's go. John 6, 38. Book of John, chapter 6, verse 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Give me Psalm 40 and 8. So Christ came to do what? His Father's will. Christ did not say to break the law, because he himself kept the law. And you're going to find out what he's talking about when he says, I did not come to do my own will. You are in sin when you choose to do things your way. You follow? Your job is to do things the godly way. The Father already set his will in this Bible. And let's read to see what the will of the Father is. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8. Mm -hmm. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. David said, I have great delight in doing your will, O Father. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Your heart is your brain. Uh, let's prove that. Uh, Mark 7, 21. Your heart is your brain. So which means the laws of God should always be present in your mind. That's the only thing that's going to prevent you from sinning. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thought. Do you think with the organ that pumps blood? Because that's, the, that's, a, that's a misconception. Like, oh, I love the Lord with all my heart and people hold on their chest. The organ just pump blood. To love requires actions. Actions requires thoughts. And thoughts, you only get that from your brain. So when David say, yeah, thy law is, is within my heart, that's talking about his brain. He's always meditating and pondering about the laws of God on how to go about living a righteous life. You understand? So give me now uh, Hebrews 10.26. Uh, book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for if we sin willfully mm -hmm. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remain no more sacrifice for sins so if the Bible is giving us a warning if we keep sinning willfully like you read the Bible 
You know that shall not steal, but you steal every day. You just a klepto. Everywhere you go, you gotta steal. The Bible tells you thou shalt not commit adultery. You wanna have sex with every uh, married woman that you can find. Meanwhile, you read the Bible and you read the law. You rem remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You deliberately, willfully wants to go out there and shop and buy. Then there won't be no sacrifice for your sin because you become a willful sinner. It's not like you made a mistake and you, try, you, 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 you feel sorry for it and you're trying to rectify yourself. No, you willingly go out and do the same evil things over and over and over and have no remorse. All right? Give me James um, 4.17. We can't live that way. But many of us like to feel comfortable in our sins because why? Nothing is happening to us. Okay, read. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So the Bible says, to him that knoweth to do good and do it not to him that is sin. Give me what's good in Romans 7. So... If you know to do good and you choose to do evil, because a lot of people might misunderstand and say, oh, oh, do good, which means give a dollar to a homeless man. No, that's not what it's talking about. To him that knows to do good and do it not, to him it is sin. So if do, not doing good is sin, and sin is the breaking of the law, what is good? Let, 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 let's let the Bible speak. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good you hear that people the law is good it's holy set apart it's just there's nothing wrong with it and it's good so when you know the laws and you choose to do things contrary to the law you become a willful sinner and a willful sinner will get punished eventually so let's go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 8 verse 11 the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's the problem right there. Because you do wickedly today, tomorrow, the day after, but yet nothing bad is happening to you. You still got the job you wanted. You still got the car you want, wanted. You still got the house. You're still eating good. Because of that, you're like, eh, surely I'm not in sin. That's why you hear people say, I'm so blessed and highly favored. Why are you so blessed? Because I make $100,000 and everything I pray for, I get it. That's what makes you blessed? You don't know the Bible. So because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, it says, therefore, the heart of men is set on doing wickedly. This is why our people refuse to come back to the laws. Because things are not happening to them yet. Okay? Let's go to Sirach. Chapter 5. Don't think for one second you're going to go unpunished for all your sins. You will get judged. Give it time. Read. The book uh, of, start at verse uh, 3. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 3. And say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Yeah, I've done everything I want and nothing happened to me, man. I don't believe in this Bible. The Lord is done away with. Most are going to pay you back for your pride. Read. Verse 4. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hap hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. What you got to understand about the Most High God is He wants to save you. He wants you to come to term where you're like, damn, you know what? I'm foul. Enough is enough. Let me change my ways. He wants you to get to that level. But you being the little wicked person that you are, because God is giving you time to change, you actually think you're not in sin. You actually think because nothing is happening to you, the way you're living is right. Well, before cancer kills you, right? You might have it, you don't even know you do. So your judgment is already set if you choose not to change. So don't keep thinking that, oh, you sin and nothing happened to you. Read. Verse 5. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. So if you sin, you're supposed to feel sorry for your sin and live it alone. Don't just add sin unto sin. Today you, do, you wake up and do this and you know it's wrong. Tomorrow you do the same thing over and over and over and over. Then you wonder why you can't, your, your brain is just left field. 
you you partakers in all kinds of evil your thought process ain't right why because you are in sin but because you got money you got a car you got a house you think you're highly favored and blessed read verse 6 and say not his mercy is great he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins for mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation resteth upon sinners. So both mercy and wrath comes from the Lord. He will pay you according to your deeds. So don't play with God. Don't get comfortable in your sins. Read. Verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So that's why the Bible is giving you a warning. Do not delay. Don't make no tarrying and turning back unto the Lord. Don't put up from day to day. I will, you know, I'll get myself right tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll get myself right next month. Or many of you guys, you wait for, oh, you know what? Next year, my New Year's resolution. First of all, the fact that you even have a resolution for the New Year, you in sin. Because we're not supposed to celebrate the new year. You follow? You're supposed to change every day. Every day you're supposed to put your best foot forward in learning the Bible and changing your ways. But if you keep on putting up from day to day, just like that, while you're safe and secure, chilling, you follow? Creeping at some dude's house, sleeping with his wife, and guess what happened? You get two shots in the head because the dude walked in and see you humping his wife and he kills you. Or you saw him coming, so you jump out the window and what happened? You break your back and your leg, you end up in a wheelchair. One night of pleasure can bring you a lifetime of pain. So don't get comfortable in your sins, okay? Give me Hebrews 3, verse 15. Playing too much, man. It's high time for us to wake up out of our sleep. The book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 15. While it is said, today, if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. So the Bible warns you, it says, hey, today, while you're listening to this class, if it's touching you, don't harden your heart, like our forefathers did and provoked the Most High to anger. Don't do it, because he gives you a chance. The, your chance is that you get to hear these classes, so that way when he brings judgment unto you, you can never be with an, you can never come to him with an excuse. To say, oh, I never heard, or I didn't know. No, you heard, you knew, but you chose to do the opposite. So, that's a slap in God's face. So, if you're going to spit in his face and slap him, what you expect him to do in return to you? Give you blessings? Give you blessings? Not, not at all. He's going to tailor made your, 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 your judgment for you. It's going to fit you like a spandex suit. And you're going to feel every inch of it because why? You are wicked and you don't want to change. Read it from the top. The book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15. While it is said, today if ye will hear his voice, mm -hmm. harden not your hearts. Read. As in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. How be it, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? whose carcasses fell in the wilderness. So what happened in the wilderness? We provoked the Most High God. We heard, but we did not obey, except for Jacob, I mean, uh, Caleb and Joshua. So he was grieved with our forefathers. So he did not allow our forefathers to enter the land. He allowed the children to enter. But as far as those who left Egypt, they all died in the wilderness. Why? Because they provoked the Lord to anger. This is not a God you want to play with. You follow? Read. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? So when the Most High gets mad, what he says, that's it. So the day he said, you know what? I'm done with you because I give you so much chance, chances and you refuse to change. I'm going to hurt you. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to be hurt. And your money won't be able to save you either. Read. But to them that believed not. But to them that believe not. Because when you read the Bible and you see what it says to do and you choose to do against what's written, you don't believe. 
Read verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So because of their unbelief, they could not enter in. So leave off your sins to meddle no more with them. That's what the scripture says. So with that, we're going to say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.